Megan Hicks of I Run Far, and I'm with Petter Engdahl. You're just the third place finisher at the 2019 Transvolcania Ultra Marathon. Good evening, Petter. Good evening. How are you doing? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm a bit sore right now in the legs, but <laughs> otherwise I feel fine. Are you, um, <coughs> you took a fall on the descent. So aside from that, do you have some soreness or is it just left over from that, yeah, going down on the ground? Uh, no, it's, uh, like all the muscles in the legs. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, pretty stiff right now, but uh, yeah, that's how it is after the first race of the season, I guess, <laughs> or any sky race in that, uh, uh, that regard, yeah. Okay, so let's back up, because this is I Run Far's first interview with you. First of all, you're Swedish? Yes. What part of Sweden do you come from? I live in uh, Åre right now, but oh. I'm uh, born and raised in uh, uh, Borlänge, like uh, a bit more south. Okay. So. And you're in your early 20s or mid-20s? Uh, I'm 24 years old. You're 24. Yeah. And you come from a Nordic skiing background, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. I've been uh, skiing all my life. That has been my main uh, focus. And then I tried some sky races a couple of years ago. And then, yeah, I was hooked uh, after that. I guess coming from Sweden, being a Nordic skier is like being Swedish, basically. Yeah, it's a big sport in Sweden, <laughs> Norway, for sure. So tell me about your upbringing in the sport and the level to which you competed before you switched over to running. Or do you still do ski competitions? Yeah, I still uh, compete in uh, cross-country okay. skiing. And uh, uh, I was in the national team until uh, uh, this year. I had a really bad winter due to uh, uh, some uh, pro health problems. But okay. um, uh, yeah, I will continue skiing in the winter and uh, yeah. Cool. And so according to sort of online results, it looks like you did your first sky race sometime in 2016? Yeah, that's probably right. Uh, right. It was in <laughs> Limone. Okay. I mean. And how did you choose, yeah, mountain running? I mean, I, I, I suppose there's a natural crossover with some sort of endurance sport, but of all of the types of things you could choose, why mountain running? Yeah, uh, I think it was uh, when I was 19 and 20, I wanted to be a better climbing, uh, climber in uh, cross-country skiing. Okay. So I started looking at like other athletes who were re had really good oxygen intake and really good climbers. And then, of course, uh, uh, when you're looking for that kind of people, uh, Kilian and uh, <laughs> Emily and uh, all the other skyrunners uh, immediately comes up. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I started to follow in the sports and uh, thought the... the um, uh, that their um, uh, ability to mm. uh, was really impressive, uh, impressive, and the the sport looks really cool. So I like, I, I want to try that, and uh, <laughs> I always like to run and uh, uh, tried some uh, like local trail races in Sweden, and uh, after that, uh, for th I want to do uh, some in uh, mm. uh, Europe as well. So. Uh, uh, then I went to Limone and uh, yeah. Got hooked really quick, it looks like. Yes, exactly. Because then in 2017 and 2018, you did like tons of mountain races. Yeah, uh, it has <laughs> evolved over the last few years. And so. so let's talk about today's race a little bit. Do I have it right that this was the longest distance you've raced on foot by like 20 kilometers or something like that? Yeah, something like that. My longest uh, before this was Tofio Kima last year. Okay. So similar in time, almost, uh, uh, but uh, uh, by distance this was the longest by far. Um, so how did today feel exactly for you? You went out yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, I felt really good from the start okay. and uh, actually uh, uh, during the whole race, actually I felt, um, uh, especially like when we were up in the mountains, mm. uh, uh, I felt like really good and when they eventually catch me at kilometer 50 or something I still felt pretty good so I could follow them f for a couple of ki kilometers there and then I took a fall I had I had uh, struggled a little bit and then uh, yeah I had to let them go but uh, otherwise I'm really satisfied with the feeling today yeah finishing on a podium in a competitive a race with this type of competition for your first you know almost 80k 50 mile style race. It has to feel pretty good. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it was nice. 
what else do you dream of doing with this sport? I mean, you've done lots of shorter distance races around Western Europe now. Um, you've bounced down to the Canary Islands to give a longer sky race a shot. What are you thinking about doing? Yeah, I have some, I have some plan and I want to try uh, longer distances. Uh, longer than today even? Uh, Right now, I don't want to. Don't, <laughs> but don't ask me for a no, little No, no, no. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, I've been curious for uh, some time to try longer feel how that will feel. But uh, yeah, I want to also to still compete in the shorter races as well, uh, like VKs and uh, sky shorter sky races. Uh, uh, I like it when you can really push and be mm. at your limit from the beginning and not have to think about oh, I need to um, uh, save some energy for the last uh, 50k. Uh, just so. sort of looking at your uphill running style today I just this was my first time watching you race I couldn't help but wonder if you had raced VKs or thought about racing VKs. Uh, I've done some uh, VKs. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you would like to do some more? Yeah. It uh, seems like you'd be a good uphill runner by your style. Uh, yeah, VKs have uh, suited me well, I think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, congratulations on your podium finish. We're off in just a couple minutes to the award ceremony where you get to collect all of your goodies. Yeah, and thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you around the races. Yeah, thank you. Awesome.